hello it's Sarah and I just received my order from Artist Club the, um, the very uh, website that offers these free patterns that I've been painting um, artistclub.com and I think these brushes oh these are the little angel ornaments I am in love I just finished doing the tutorial for these these were my hubby cut me these little pieces of wood and uh, I just think they turned out so cute and I really think I did a good job with the tutorial too it was really fun and um, I these are the ones I made for the tutorial so I am gonna wait I think to upload the video um, because next month, October, I think it's like National Decorative Painting Month or something. I saw a post on Facebook by uh, Debbie Cole. And so I think I'm going to try and do a little more painting next month. But this is in the can. I filmed it. I just, I'm converting it right now. It's pretty long, but they're super duper cute. And I think, I think you guys are going to be able to do this pretty well and what I love about it it has that little added mixed media feel to it with using the um, this the book pages back there anyway all right but I'm in love they are so cute I just wanted to share these brushes so I ended up getting it was $28 with shipping shipping was six bucks so for around $22 um, I got one two three, four, five, six, seven brushes. So that's pretty good. They averaged around two, three dollars each. That's what they average. And that's pretty cheap for brushes. I mean, um, when I, I usually buy them at Michael's and AC Moore and I really like the, um, what are they called? They were called Artist American Painter with the pink handles and I'm really rough on my brushes too so anything that can withstand what I put my brushes through I um, oh, I'm all zoomed in all right I'll zoom out I'm just going to take these out of the package and I'm going to show you what you get and I believe that Papillion is the artist club brand of brushes so it's their own brand but I just wanted to try them and I think I'm going to try one of my subbies, I can't remember, oh, recommended the Robert Simmons brushes, and I think I have a few of those, and she swears by the Robert Simmons brushes. Um, let me see if I have Low Cornell. My brushes are so old that you can't even read the handles anymore. <laughs> Um, but I'm sure I have a few Robert Simmons brushes. I'm just, uh, let's see. Simply Simmons. They sell these at um, Michael's, I think. But these aren't, they're probably a version of the Robert Simmons brushes. I don't think these are what she's talking about. Because I actually got these for watercolor and I never used them. This is called master's touch i think that might be from um see these are low cornell low Cor i think i have a lot of low cornell but master's touch i think is the hobby lobby brand so anyway i want it because not all brushes are created equal this is a fact and uh like this is just a cheapy cheapy snap decor i think this is from ac moore by princeton and they're like I said they're like two bucks and because I beat my brushes up and when I do mixed media I'm not gonna take care of it as much as I would for um, decorative painting like this type of painting I like to have a quality brush because the, the better you don't want one of those stiff straw bristle brushes when you're painting this type of way um, it, they do work for some things but not for this specific style of painting that I um, I'm going to be doing. They're looking really good as I look at this and they when you get brushes they come with I don't know if it's starch but it says Papillion by the Artist Club. This is a number six filbert 
and a filbert has it's called a cat's tongue it's a flat brush but it has a rounded um, top to it so I got a six and an eight I think filbert I got a three eighths inch angle which is my go-to and I got a bigger angle this one is a five eighths inch angle and I like the shape of them they look pretty good Urgh. why won't you slide out you little monkey ah um yeah this one that doesn't isn't starched this is I like the soft bristle Ooh, if they stay together oh man I might be happy with these these are a little starchy so I'm gonna do a demo and I'll show you I also ordered this is the number three round which is a go-to round size I got a little bit smaller no oh, this is a number one liner and then a number two liner a number two round but this is going to be good for details this number one liner I love the color of the handles I mean they're super pretty and a lot of times brushes come with this little cover on them don't put it back on because you'll just bend your bristles you really want to make sure all your bristles and my water is super dirty this side isn't bad so I'll use this side but I want to get I'm gonna I have my palette paper here look this is a comparison this is a toe up it's toe up this brush that's my tour up um, but it's it's messed up I am rough on everything all my tools take a beating because I'm just rough in general but I love this brush this is has and has been my favorite angle shader for as long as I can remember having this I like the length of the bristles because I like it holds more water the stubbier like if you cut it off here I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit like if you cut this off here it's not going to hold as much water so I love the longer bristles but this one in comparison it's got a nice long bristle too and it's a little wider which I don't mind they're both five in, five eighths inch and so I'm going to try I'm going to compare them and then this is my really this is my go-to shader so I'm hoping this one because I'm a heavy hand when I load the brush I load the brush I put a lot of water a lot of paint so if the smaller the brush for me means that I can't overload and I won't my piece isn't going to be overloaded anyway but if you look at this brush it is frayed on both sides it's a mess I mean the chisel is still great and that's why I can still use it because this chisel you just want that to be able to stay together when you're floating but the sides they break because I run it on the bottom of my water basin and to clean it but this would be com comparable to this one and this is the 3 8 inch angle I'm liking the way these feel the softness and it looks like those bristles are staying together so I am pretty excited to see what just what happens with these um, might as well do my number three round and I want to do the liner this is the number one liner so I'm gonna do these but I these look promising all right so all I have is a little piece of um, I'm going to try and use the smooth side of some watercolor paper and I'm just going to pick a color a pretty color how about uh, I don't know um, antique antique mauve you know I'm a pink girl shake it up and I'm going to put it out on my palette um, hopefully let me move the water over here move some of this crap out of the way I am a very messy painter when I my desk is a mess when I paint for some reason it just comes in it starts to crowd me so I'm gonna put a little bit of this on my palette and let's float um, first I'll show you what it looks like with my my go-to uh, I always go into my water bucket then I blot 
it'll go up a little bit. And then I corner load into that puddle of paint and then you start to push the paint into the bristles. You load the brush. And what you're trying to accomplish with this motion is to go from darkest to middle to light to water. Now you can still, you can see bubbles over here, water bubbles. It may, my brush may be a little wet. I like it wet because it moves. So when you go to your piece, that's what you get. Now a, on the watercolor paper, it's gonna soak right into it because it's not sealed. So maybe this isn't the best way to demo this. But I think you can see a graduation of color. It goes from, and then you can pull, sometimes you can pull the color down into the water. But that's why they call it a float. The water pulls the paint, the water, I mean, the paint floats into the water. So because I have water over here, it's only water over here, it, all right, anywho. Once you understand that, it makes sense what you're doing. So now I'm grabbing the same size in the Artist Club brush, and I'm really hoping it's good. All right, I'm corner loading. I'm gonna just go right into that same puddle. It feels good. It feels good. The bristles are staying together. See how they're not splitting and splaying apart? Oh, MJ, I'm excited. It's not really, I don't know. See, look, it's splayed there. It didn't hold as much water. I Actually, this paper might just be sucking the water right out of the brush, but usually I can go around something. Let me, I have this pumpkin here that I didn't finish. I don't think we're going to be able to see what I put on here. Um, anywho, I'm not thrilled that it's splitting, but... I think it it did it loaded really well. I like the way it loaded. I like it. It feels good and the see it didn't come apart that time. It stayed together. I like it. I think it felt really good. I want to go to the smaller guy now. This is my little chopped up messed up one. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to load it, corner load, and I'm going to go right back into this puddle. Now, you never want to push into the color so far that you get this end of the brush in the paint. I only want water on that end of the brush. So you only, you can push into it and load it, but you don't want paint on that side of the brush. That's my go-to shader, and it's trash. It really is. I should not be using it anymore, so I hope this one works so much. I hope it works so much. It's very thin. I can tell that there aren't as many bristles. Like, I think it's denser this way. So you see what I'm saying? So we'll see. Blot, corner load, I really like the texture, of, um, like the, the stiffness of the bristles. I, I like a soft bristle when I paint. I don't like when they're stiff. I like it. It seems like it. I mean, I don't think this, um, maybe I should come back with a, I'm going to seal this. I'm going to seal it. Actually, I guess I can just do it on camera. This is just all purpose sealer. And I'm going to take my big brush and I'm just going to seal this paper with a coat of it. Hopefully it doesn't take that long to dry. I've never tried this before, but I mean, it's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to stop the porousness of your surface. So it creates a, ba a barrier that your paint can sit on. I just want to get a good amount of the page, so I'm just going to force this dry. Kiwi's on my shoulder. She gets a little nervous. You nervous?
working a little bit. It's a little sticky, but I think it's dry enough. And I want to see what this is like on a sealed piece. You're okay. I put it back. My little birdie. She's my little friend. Are you my little friend, Kiwi? Man, it changed the... Wow, it changed the surface a lot. I guess it's not dry in there. Um, it looks really weird. It looks cool. I mean, not weird, but... I want to do it with this guy again. I like them. I have to say, I mean, for a cheap brush, these are good. They're cheap. See, that's a thing. You can spend $6 on one brush. Some of them, the bigger brushes like this size, a 5 8 inch angle, could be $6, $7, $8, up to $10. And so I would get that with a coupon. But this was like $4. Uh, $4.79, so it was $5. Um, so, that's what I'm talking about. But for a cheaper brush, these aren't bad. I don't like it on, but see, look, it's not splitting. And, I mean, I got an all right. I don't know if that's, this isn't a good surface. It's not the, the traditional surface that I would be painting on. But let's try these rounds. Where did I put them? I have a number three, which I, I've told you and I will tell you again in the, in the little angels video, that a number three round is a really nice brush to have in your stash because it's a very versatile brush. It's, it's a round tip, so the, the bristles come out and they come to a point. But when you push it down, you can get a wide area of, of the piece covered too. So if you're base coating like a small circle, it's it's it'll do it pretty quickly for you because I do I didn't order any flats because I have a lot of flats that are halfway decent that's why, um, but I usually base coat with a flat brush but a round brush it's just very versatile so let's see if I can uh, so a stroke would be like you put it down and come up on a point. It's, it's got a nice point. It's recovering pretty well. See that? And you don't want these to flay either. See, it's a little flay, splayed. That's what I want to say, not flayed. Splayed. When the bristles start to splay out and they don't grab each other anymore. So this is looking pretty good. That looks pretty good. It You can... So if you were going to make a leaf... You go, well, I usually make leaves with filberts. So, I mean, this is not bad. I like the way it's holding together. It's, it's a little bit splayed. The tip doesn't stay as pointy as some do. But if you get up on the tip, It's, it's a little, see how it's splayed there? It's not holding a, a, a point as nice. So let's see what the liner does. And I'm very, like I said, you hear me dragging the brush along the, um, the grid on the bottom of my water bucket. And I mean, that's, I'm rough. I'm very rough. I'm not gentle. Um, so this is a number one liner. And what I would do, so say if we were working on these little angels, all this line work, all that black is line work. And so you want a brush that's going to be able to make a consistent line, thin, I like it, and I'm right up on the tip. And it's, it's holding a decent amount of paint for me, too, so I don't have to reload mid-stroke, mid you know. So it has a, a pretty narrow tip. I think you could do some line work with this. you got to get your paint really inky. 
really wet. You want to work with a wet paint when you uh, use a liner brush. And I think it's basically because I'm on this paper, the paint is just stopping. There's no, you know, that's why you seal your wood pieces um, so that you ha you can, you know, it might even be better to show it on this um, shiny paper. Yeah, I mean, it's just flowing better. But it's a nice um, tip, and it's staying pointy. That's the main thing. Now, I have the one that I was using. I want to do, I think Gina Aaron's did a, a this one. It does not stay together. I've, I've, I ruined it right away. This is one of the Simply Simmons 10 slash 0. And even when I load it, and I as soon as I start to, to make a line, which this one is really a nice thin line, it splits on me. It starts to split. So you can see. So it's not, I've ruined it. And she has this thing, look, see how many how it's splayed apart. She puts the brushes, her splayed brushes, into boiling water. And it supposedly fixes them. So you just dunk it in the water and take it out. And I haven't tried it, but um, it'd be worth a try because I've ruined, I, I have some a lot of splayed brushes. But this is a very decent brush. It's decent because the little halos that we did, we just did this little kind of swirl line on here. And I think you can do that with this. The little snowflakes, you're just going to make... Very good. I, I think it's decent. So, I mean, the number, this is a number one liner, and they come smaller than that. So, now if you go with a script liner, the, the bristles are much longer. And that's because it holds a lot more water, and you can go, you could just make a swirly all day with that once you've loaded it correctly. I did just want to do one thing with the, um, I'll show you. Let's just do this. This is the... Filbert. This is a number eight filbert. And I just want to see how it makes a leaf. See if that end stays. It looks good. I've loaded it. It's a little wet. Um, but I want that tip to stay snug together. All the bristles, not like this. I want the bristles to stick together. So when you make a leaf, you just push down and pick up. That's, that's making an awesome leaf, and I'm not in the shot. But that, I would get every size, Filbert. I mean, that is phenomenal. That's really good. I want to try the smaller one. I'm running out of paint, but yeah. So I'm pretty satisfied for my 22 plus shipping, you know. Um, for a cheaper brush, they're pretty. They're super pretty. It seems like, like I ruin brushes too. I leave them in the water. And then the water soaks up through the ferrule of the of the brush and it and the paint all chips off. So I mean, I'm just saying, like it's like this one, look. I left it in water and look, the paint is literally coming off the brush. This is a I don't even know. This is the Princeton. I think this is just a cheap one from AC Moore. And this is my number two round. But the bristles are holding together pretty well. But you know. That's the thing, like I'm abusive to my, my tools. I really am. And, and you'll find that a lot of decorative painters do that. They leave their brushes in water, not good to do. But you know, life happens and you do it and then you regret it. <laughs> I'm running out of paint. But yeah, these seem to be really nice for the price. I'm giving them a thumbs up. Um, so I've loaded that, let's see. Look at that. Really nice. Like you put it down and the bristles aren't splaying apart. And you can get a nice leaf shape. Very good. I'm excited. All right. So I just wanted to share that since I think October is National Painting Month. I just wanted to, you know, I'm going to come up with a couple more painting projects. And so it'd probably be 
blah, 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 blah. It will be nice if you have some good tools in your toolbox. That way, this whole painting thing doesn't feel as intimidating and you'll, you'll be successful. And um, yeah, they also sell the Maxine's mop on, I have two of them in different sizes, so I'm good. I'm kind of, I don't know what that is. It seems like there's a little piece of something in there. <gasps> oh, excuse me. They, I'm pretty sure they may even sell the, um, the Debbie Cole dry brushing brushes. And I'm going to clean these because they're a mess. But these are my favorite dry brushing brushes, the Debbie Cole. It's called Silver Coal Dry br br Blending. Dry Blending. Silver Coal Dry Blending. Then these are the Maxine's Mop. This is called, <laughs> and they're by Low Cornell, and you can't even read it on that one. Low Cornell Maxine's Mop. And I know for a, I know for sure they sell these. I'm not positive about the dry brushing brushes. Um, but I would definitely recommend them. There's something about the way Maxine has them designed. It's the, the, the firmness of the bristle. They're just wonderful. They do such a good job. And uh, so I would recommend them. And then, I mean, hey, get yourself a couple of these to start with. Um, a flat... Uh, definitely angle brushes and a liner um, and that way we can paint together alright you guys alright thanks for watching